I'm back with another MJB video. Uh, this is going to be called, this one should be good because this one is two real life dating horror stories animated, which obviously, you know, dating can be something when, you know, like, like access can be pretty messed up, you know, you can have relationship issues, you know, there's a lot of shit that can happen in relationships. So I'm just going to make sure that I did not react to this yet because I actually feel like I did and I do not know why. Two real life. I'm just going to look that up. No videos were found. Okay, perfect. Sorry, for some reason I thought that I asked, but sorry. But it's, it's just over 11 minutes long, once again, it's an MJV video. Two real life, and it's apparently real, real life, I don't know if it's saying two real life, or real, real life, like, you know, horror stories animated. So I guess without further ado, let's get into this video. It should be good though. Like, and dating can pretty, can turn into some effed up shit, so. We'll see that My happens. uncle, Miguel, had a harrowing experience whilst on a date in Mexico. Okay. It was 1980-something. And wow. he was traveling around the country, living okay. the dream. He was Sounds never fun. lucky when it came to love. Still yeah. isn't. But whilst just outside Guadalajara, he met a girl called Ramona. Her, her Guadalajara now? According to him, she was young, vivacious, and extremely beautiful. Okay. The pair of them went on a date together. I don't know why and it vivacious really means, well. but okay. Cool, As such, cool. my uncle decided to stay in town a bit longer than he originally planned, just so that the two of them could have a second date. Okay. She was apparently a girl worth sticking around for. Not only was she super sexy and witty, she was also charming and well, sweet. Is she normal? Is she not like, you know, it was like messed the hell up? Date, but he figured like she's in a horror story, so... Maybe she's the one. Yeah, <laughs> okay. He still wonders if she might have been to this day. My uncle and Ramona were having dinner in a restaurant. Okay. A fancy place that was out of most people's price range. Mm. He wanted to show off to her and make it obvious that he was serious about her. Okay. The restaurant itself was full, but one table of men in particular stood out to my uncle. They were dressed decadently, but tastelessly. All right. White suits, gold chains, sunglasses indoors. Hmm. They were making twice as much noise as all of the rest of the diners combined. Okay. Put it this way, it was clear to everyone in there that these guys were narcos. What? Still, Narcos? they ignored the men as best they could and sat down for their meal. I don't know what they have to do with the story, but okay. The conversation was flowing, and according to my uncle, there was a definite chemistry between him and Ramona. The whole evening, however, the group of Narcos were eyeing up my uncle's date. It was making them both feel a little uneasy. Well, I mean, hello, if, so if she's sexy and hot, well then what do you expect? My uncle quickly waves to a waiter for of course, the check. Of course the guys are gonna... The waiter appears uncomfortable. What? Why is he sweating? He approaches my uncle and tells him not to worry about the bill. Apparently, their dinner had already been paid for. By, by, by the four what guys. What are you talking about? By the four Who guys. Who paid our bill? My uncle asked. Them right the over waiter there. gestured to the group of narcos. They were all looking over at him. Not really sus, too. Their glasses. Like, this obviously spelled trouble. Yeah, clearly. You could tell just from the way these guys looked that they had something planned. Well, yeah, clearly. Knowing the type of men they were. Most people like mad with have stood up and walked out of there as fast as they could, not wanting to engage them. Mad and mad My with smoke. Uncle, however, was a proud man, and didn't want to seem weak in front of his date. He wasn't about to be shown up by these Pablo Escobar wannabes. <laughs> Pablo Escobar He approached them with his chest puffed out, oh, acting as confident as he could. There you go. He planned to politely tell them that he didn't need their charity. Before he could say anything, however, one of the men... A guy dressed in all white asked him a question. Did you enjoy your dinner with your wife? She's not my wife, my uncle replied. She's my date. Huh, that's lucky for you. She's very pretty. Confused, my uncle simply said, I want to pay for our food myself. How much do I owe you? With what my uncle describes as the purest look of soullessness he's ever seen, the man in white says, No, consider it a goodbye gift, because after this, you'll never see her again. What? Nobody at the table laughed. All of the men just smiled at my Uncle Miguel. These guys were being serious. That's a little my scary. My uncle doesn't respond, just walks back to his date and okay, hurries around call, the restaurant. Call the police, you know, so. He and Ramona jumped into his car and sped away leaving only dust clouds in their wake. 
Yeah. He continued driving for what must have been 45 minutes through the desolate Mexican countryside, because checking far away his mirrors every few seconds to see if they were being pursued. From what he could tell, they had gotten away. Hopefully. Shit. Needing to fill up his tank. Of my course, why is it always... Why? In area. And then we already know that they're going to show up on nowhere. And they were running on fumes. As he got out of the car to fill her up, three other cars also pulled in. Surrounding my uncle's vehicle. Why is the girl? Why did they the girl come up? followed after all. A number of men got out of the cars, aiming guns at my uncle and his date. Oh my God! They then took Ramona, kicking and screaming, threw her in the back of one of the cars, and drove off with her. There was nothing my uncle could do to stop them. He had never been so powerless in all his life. All he could do was watch as the cars drove over the horizon and out of sight. Taking with them any trace that Ramona existed, and any chance of a happy future that my uncle and her could have had together. Whoever the guy in white was, he was right. That night really was the last time my uncle Miguel saw Ramona. For all he knows, she may have died that very night, or might still be alive today somewhere. Whatever happened to her though, he's sure it doesn't bear thinking about. Things like this happen from time to time in Bandito country. Most of the time, people don't even report these abductions to the police, terrified of what might happen if they do. Can we say, blame you in that sense, but what the hell, man? Like, if you actually love that person and then they're just like, yeah, I'll never see her again. When I was 22, I lived in you a semi cops. semi sketchy part of Brooklyn, known as South Williamsburg. I lived in a two-bedroom apartment with a lesbian roommate named Tony, no who I didn't get along with very well. And I regularly went on dates with guys I met online. Okay, Most of these safe about it at least? Right home about. But then there was the time I met Dave. Dave and I agreed to meet for a few drinks at my favorite bar, which was called Barcade. Okay, well, at least it's in public, you know, not This bar was amazing, because I had dozens of American microbrews on tap, and because the entire large space was filled with 80s arcade games, which were all still a quarter of play. I'm talking Miss Pac-Man, Gallagher, Space Invaders 1942, Tapper, Gauntlet, you name it. All right. What I didn't realize is the decision to meet at this particular bar possibly saved my life. So I met him at Barcade, ordered a beer, cashed in two dollars in quarters, and challenged him to a few games. We started out having fun, okay. playing in turns and cheering the other one on. But after a few rounds of punch out, he started getting antsy. A lot of, do you want to take this back to my place and let's get out of here, etc. Why? I blew him off and didn't think anything of it at first. But since no. I still had quite a few quarters left and just thought he was anxious to get into my pants. I finished my beer and ordered a second, which is usually my limit for sobriety, seeing as I'm quite small. Then my favorite game opened up. I excitedly ran for it, put a quarter in, and I sucked. <laughs> I just couldn't time anything right. I kept missing my cues and didn't make it past the first round. This was weird, since I pretty much lived on this game and beat anyone I challenged She just had her second drink, what was in it? When I mentioned with wounded pride that I'm normally not this bad after only one beer, he started to get even more incessant. No, seriously, let's go. This place is too crowded for good conversation. Let's go somewhere quieter. I didn't understand, since we'd only been there for about half an hour. Yeah. And I was interested in having some fun. But I also wanted to get to know him first. I, again, insisted on using my quarters, of which I only had two left. I put another one in the game, determined to kick some ass. And this time, not only could I not make it past the first round, but I had trouble even holding on to my joystick correctly. This is when I started putting two and two together. I realized I was in a really bad situation, and I needed to play it cool. So I did what any normal 22-year-old would do. I excused myself to the bathroom, and proceeded to flip the fuck out. I called my roommate, and begged her to come and get me. We only lived a few blocks away, but she was at her girlfriend's house in Park Slope, about a 15-minute cab ride, and was in the middle of a date. Of course. I begged her and offered to pay for not only their date, but also the cost of the cab, 
and finally she agreed to come and get me. While I waited, I just hung out in the bathroom, getting more and more freaked out, losing more and more of my fine motor skills as the minutes went by. As women came into the bathroom, I kept asking them to check if he was still out there. For the first 20 minutes, he was. After that, people kept coming back and saying he was gone. I still didn't feel safe leaving the bathroom though. I stayed there, on the phone with my friend in North Carolina, waiting for Tony to show up. After an hour, she walked in and carried me out of the bar. I was able to walk with assistance, so it was more like a leaning carry if you can imagine that. She was still upset with me interrupting her date though, so instead of taking me back to the apartment, she took me to a gay bar nearby, the Metropolitan. Oh. I got parked on a chair for the next hour while she partied with some friends, That's I think. Not... The hell? That's Honestly, kind of my memory of this is a little hazy. I just know we were there. All I remember next is waking up in my bed in the middle of the night, but having crazy cramps and spasms all over my body, and not being able to control it. Then... I don't remember anything else until the next morning, where my only remaining symptom was a really bad headache. I never heard from Dave again, although I did get a phone call two days later from a blocked number, mm. where a woman yelled curses at me for 30 seconds before threatening to kill me and hanging up. Okay, bye. I don't know why, but I'm convinced the two events are connected. Either way, that's my story. I was drugged, but not raped. And I am forever thankful. Yeah, so honestly, I, I assume she said she was drugged. Um, I don't know what kind of drug it was, but see, that's the thing. You you gotta be really careful. Like, you honestly don't know what the other person's gonna gonna do. Like, <clears throat> I have a dating app. I do, and I'm pretty sure I've told you guys this before in a previous dating app horror story video. But obviously, I'm careful about it. I don't meet people. I talk to the person, and even if I feel comfortable with them, like, there's numerous people that I feel comfortable with at the moment, but do I meet them? No. I mean, one, during COVID, of course not. But there's a few people that I do want to meet, and they seem cool. Like, I'm like, yeah, you know, like, I, I would love to hang out with you, you know? Like, not to, like, do anything nasty, you know, like a hookup or anything like that, you know, just like a... Because the app I have is more like a hookup app, but I don't do it for hookups, I... No, I don't. So, <clears throat> basically, I just talk to people, I, I put chat and friends, that's it. So it's not, it's not like Tinder or anything like that, or Tinder's like the only dating app I know other, one, other, other than, than the one I have right now. But yeah, um, all I gotta say is be careful with who you meet. If you're gonna drink something, be sure that you got it yourself. If they offer you something, don't take, take, take it. Like, if I meet any of these people, I'm probably just gonna bring my own drinks. Like, not that I think they would, they would, they would drug me. I've talked to them, I've talked to them for like a few months now. And they and we basically talk talk every day or like even a little bit every day, you know. It's like you would think that they're normal, but are they really? You don't know that. So, but also one of my friends actually knows one one person on the app. So, in in a sense, it's kind of like yeah, maybe I could feel more safe with that person now because this my uh, my friend knows that person. So like they they live together. So, yeah. My point is just be safe and tr try not to like get yourself into any effed up situ situations. Me having this app and me having been asked numerous times to, to hook up and meet up, I could have been in numerous situations by now. I, I could be dead right now. But I'm not. I'm still here doing, doing videos to horror stuff. Like, I'm, I, I've had to horror stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to fall for no stupid, you know, thing where I notice a red flag. I, I notice a red flag, like, like right away. So, you just got to be, like, have your red, your red flag senses up. If you're doing any, any anything that could be potentially dangerous, <clears throat> dating apps, or <clears throat> hookup apps, even worse for me. So just be careful and be aware of what you're doing. That's all I gotta say. And if you're on like Tinder or something, and then you're and, and then you think you're meeting a girl, make sure it's a girl. Make sure it's who they say they are. That's like the first thing I do. Especially if the person's good looking, I'm like, okay, let me just go on Snapchat to make sure that you're real. That's like the very first thing. Anybody could could be hot. I see the photo and I'm like. Or, or I see them on con and I'm just like, I'm disappointed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, that's how it is. A lot of pe pe people can lie about that stuff, so... Please be aware. My cat's trying to get into my room, so I'm probably gonna... Um, probably gonna let her in, so the next video you see, you're probably gonna uh, have my cat in here, just heads up. 
I know that's going to be it for this video. Please be sure to subscribe. Please be sure to comment down below any thoughts you guys have on this video. If you guys have any had any effed up experiences with dating or dates, then let me know. I definitely do feel really bad for that one, the, the first story though. Like you literally just on a date and then, and then three guys just take take your girlfriend. Bye. Sorry, four guys. Like what the hell was that? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Please be sure to subscribe. Please be sure to comment down below anything you guys want to say. Be sure to like this video and be sure to turn on post notifications if you haven't done so yet. That's going to be it. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.